come to my shop. Actually, a couple of you might know that uh, I founded a group on Facebook lately called uh, Woodworking Europe. Well, this actually went back, the idea came back uh, for my 2x4 contest of last year, for my 2x4 contest entry of last year. Other than in the US, over here in Europe, houses are built out of bricks. And the drywall houses are mostly pre-manufactured in uh, some companies. And, uh, well, driven by truck, the walls are already done and they just drive them over here uh, to the place where it will be raised. The foundation is made and the drywalls just taken off the truck and mounting it. So this is one thing, uh, one fact why a 2x4 isn't a common piece for European woodworkers to work with. Um, as when you are doing some drywall stuff, it's mainly uh, you're using some, well, 2x4s out of steel, uh, very thin steel, and you just mount your uh, the drywall stuff onto it. So one of the problems had been for some of us to get hold of a 2x4. Okay, this led to my idea, okay, why not found a group uh, which is discussing European problems and um, in this way I found the group. Okay, now I go back to this, well, this actually was my dream shop as I mentioned, as I said, and uh, I'll go back to this one now. As, um, well, the idea of the dream shop as I built it, it was to make a place where woodworkers can meet and work on the same, well, problem or um, on the same project at the same time interacting with each others. Okay, so uh, with the idea from uh, Garrett, uh, not, not just sawdust down in Portugal, um, we thought about why not making a European collaboration build. So the European collaboration build uh, was meant to uh, show specialities of the region we do live in um, and make some things to display or to serve or to store it in uh, or whatever. So I invited a couple of uh, European woodworkers to join into the European collaboration build. With the aid of Karol, the Polish woodworker, I got the invitation translated into Polish and uh, Gerrit translated the invitation into uh, Dutch. And uh, this led to a couple of people actually thinking about what to uh, what to display, what makes uh, their region a special region. So in the end, my dream shop came to a work and I'm really happy about that. As we all came together, we all helped each others on a hidden Facebook page and there we discussed our, our ideas and whether it would be nice or not. And also, there was a lot of encouragement. Um, we encouraged a couple of people, you know, uh, doing videos for the first time and also um, getting out of their own language and getting into the international language of English. Uh, so, head over to the description box and see all the ones who had been able to make a project within a certain time limit in my dream shop as well this is for me in my dream shop and now join me on my journey when I 
show you what makes uh, what is the sp what the speciality of uh, Lower Saxony, especially in my area here, the Lüneburg Heath in Germany is, and uh, what I made for it to display it. Salt. 
and this made Lüneburg very rich. And they took the water and cooked it. And for cooking the water, you need wood, fire. So they went into the forests and cut down all the trees. Now we've got one animal over here, which is uh, called the uh, Heidschnucke, kind of a sheep. And this animal uh, loves to eat uh, young trees, other than the heath. The heath is, well, not tasting good, or I don't know, but these uh, animals do eat the, the small uh, branches from the trees. And in this way, there hadn't been a chance of a forest coming back to the area. So the area ended up looking something like this, rather than it had been before like this. Okay, what did I make for this? And this is, uh, I made a salt cellar for the, well, European collaboration build. And this salt cellar reminds me of the story behind uh, the Lüneburg Heath and it also serves pretty much um, other purposes. Well, where do you need some salt? You need some salt at breakfast. So I dished out the, the top here in order to place an egg. But you'll see this in the following video. And I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you get a little understanding of how, well, something is really affecting the appearance of, uh, of a region, which is my region, and the something had been sold, which really changed the appearance of my, my region over here. So follow me along as I'm showing you how I made this salt cellar. <laughs> With my intention of making a stack of three boxes, I started uh, cutting the three blanks from the piece of elder I've got and I really love this stuff. Some hot melt glue I mount uh, the blank to oh, um, the glue block. With the blank mounted uh, it came to me that I should just stick on one box instead of the three and I'm using here I'm using the one with the most inclusion as this might ne uh, lead to some interesting uh, texture on on the on the uh, later box uh, so I start up here uh, chewing up the face and uh, getting this into a round shape
drilling the pilot hole for the depth, I started with a bread point bit and finished up with a normal bit as the normal bit hasn't got this pointy end uh, which leads to a deeper uh, hole as I actually wanted it to. Following out the inside, I started with my small bowl gouge. Finishing up with, uh, with a scraper, I ended up with uh, the inside of a perfect square uh, shape. And in this order, I can get this back onto a jam chuck. Having the box back on the jam chuck, I started by, uh, well, smoothing out the outer surface and cupping out as well the, the bottom of, of the box in order to have the box fully seated on, the, on, on a leveled surface afterwards. Detail ring add a professional touch to the bottom. After sanding it down to 600, I apply a coat of sanding sealer to the outside and uh, call the box finished. For the lid, I mounted the second blank and turned a very shallow tenon to the uh, bottom, which uh, actually fits perfect into the um, into the box. From there on I started shaping the outside and uh, parted this off at the at the bandsaw. The remaining part of the blank became a glue block and I just uh, turned a small recess in order to align the, the lid and reverse mounted the lid with the aid of some um, double stick tape um, in order to finish it. Thank you very much for following me along how I made this salt cellar and I'll try to get some pictures here for you. And this had been really a useful thing. And it describes how, the, how my region is affected by the salt. So we, especially we as woodworkers, should have in mind that uh, we should be careful with all our resources and uh, actually try to preserve our resources and keep on that. As some of the man-made uh, landscapes aren't that pretty at all. Well, they are not that pretty as the Lüneburg Heath. So thank you very much again. And I also have to thank everybody who joined me in my dream shop on the on making on working on a special uh, on on a special project, special for everyone who participated down from Italy up to the north of uh, Finnish uh, Finland. Well, <laughs> that had been the Finnish video and from Portugal over to uh, Poland, not to forget about uh, the UK, the Netherlands, and uh, I hope our, our, our Austrian friends as well. <laughs> Sorry about that, 
I didn't forget about you. Um, this had been uh, really uh, not only the challenge for making something uh, out of wood, but this had been also a challenge getting people, as I just mentioned, Poland, they are mainly speaking Polish. Well, head over to the page of our Polish friends here and you'll be amazed of, of what they do. Finland, uh, well, uh, it had been kind of uh, lucky that I call Kore uh, Sternbeck, my friend, for a long time now. And uh, I really love what he is doing with his woodworking and he is really taking care of all the resources he gets and uh, this is also something which gets me into that uh, which really makes me think about uh, doing things like that from the uk we got a couple of uh, people and i don't list them all up now just some major names on that one and this is carol uh, carol had been uh, had became a great friend over the time and over the build as we uh, work together get uh, inspiration from each other and uh, actually uh, got this and one of the most important persons on this group is uh, Gerrit. Gerrit from, uh, well I can't pronounce his uh, Portuguese name, sorry about that Gerrit but it's from not just sawdust and he came up with quite with the with the idea of making something which is special for the area and uh, this actually made me um, go ahead and do this in collaboration with Garrett and Carol we made this here <clears throat> other than that I'll uh, I'll like to invite you to join the Woodworking Europe group uh, to get more um, information as we got a lot of people down there from Australia up to the US or Canada. Uh, people who are not actually in Europe but they like to help us with our problems uh, with our woodworking over here. So with that said, it's uh, the first European collaboration build as a secret build and uh, if you like to make your own video of what makes your region special, feel free to enter this to me and I'll add you to the playlist of the uh, European collaboration build. 2015. So thank you very much and with that said it's with greetings from good old Germany your Peter Freitag. Thank God it's Friday.